Well, welcome to the journey. This is part two of the Susie Garcia story. And please, if you missed the first part, go back and watch because you're going to hear a continuation of her story. There's so much to her. There's things that she just brought up in the last episode I didn't even know about. So I'm glad that she did because now we can go in and start talking about that as well. So we left off, we were talking uh, about her life. She was raised in a, a Pentecostal church, very legalistic went to church, you know, probably 10 hours a week just to be a good, a good Christian or a good human. And, um, and then when she was met with adversity, didn't really know what to do with it until she found the true love of Jesus. So welcome to the show, Susie. Thank you. Super excited. So I want to get, now you, we were talking about, um, how you know, the loss of your, your second baby, you had the, the, your appendix rupture and, um, and also too, you and I were a lot alike with the working out <laughs> and being the drill sergeant. And, you know, one thing I wanted to mention, there were people that I would just yell at because they weren't, yeah, I know we're like going, yeah. Where I'd say like, what's wrong with you? Get up, <laughs> do one more, you know, now <laughs> did that, did it work for most people? Absolutely. Because a lot of people are stuck and they don't, they need someone to just, you know, push them out. And that's what Billy Blanks did for me. I was really stuck where I was. And he really showed me that I had more ability and I was smarter than I thought I was and I could do more things. Yes. But then the enemy comes in and tries to help us take that over the top and go to the opposite direction of the Lord and making our own bodies God. Yeah. So, um, so now just, I want to go back a little bit about that. So have you, were you always like an instructor? What were you? Um, actually I was a, a stay at home mom and, um, then I became a boot camp instructor. So I oh, okay. went to the classes for a while. I became friends with the owner and then he asked me to see if I was interested in, in being a trainer. And at first I was like, that would be fun. <laughs> And then I fell in love with it. To be quite honest, I kind of felt like this was my purpose. This was what I was designed to be. This is natural for me. This is natural for me because I, I loved it. It was just like so satisfying. I felt like I was an actress, like there was a platform. <laughs> like the, so, somebody wants to, you know, listen to me. Okay, I can do this. So I really enjoyed being a trainer. I really did. It was, it was a lot of fun. But like you just said, it really depends on what type of personality you have because it wasn't for everybody. Not everybody wanted to come to my classes. I would have people walk out of my classes, Julianne, but it is the strangest thing to say now, but I almost enjoyed it. Like I was like, if you don't have what it takes to take my class, it's okay, leave. What kind of person get out. am I? <laughs> you don't <laughs> like, measure up, like, get out. That's horrible. But that's just who I was. But no, if I, I was I, I no, relate. I relate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can relate so, to that. Yeah. Now, now I can honestly say, I'm sorry, everyone that took my class. <laughs> <laughs> and I was a sergeant slaughter. You know but, what is so cool now? And I just want to share this with you too, is that now when I work out, well, okay. So when now when you're spending a lot of time and you're hearing at, at a gym, everybody's got a shoulder that hurts, a knee that hurts, yeah. a foot. Now it's your time to go in and say, oh, let me pray for that. And that's Amen. what I love now is that I am not there for that. Just on Saturday, uh, Billy does a really fun class in a lady's um, driveway. <laughs> In wow. Yeah. And so, um, and, and I'm always hearing like, oh, my shoulder hurts and my, my, <laughs> I've got, you know, carpal tunnel or my knees are hurting or whatever. And that is an opportunity to say like, oh, I just, I heard you say that hurts. Can I pray for you? So we turn that into a ministry. And that yeah. is what, cause you're in gyms, you find lots of people that have a lot of little things that hurt them. So I just wanted to throw that out there for you to see that you can really make an impact because they're, they're known you, they know you as, you know, Susie, the slaughter woman, but now <laughs> they're going to be like, Hey, by the way, I've got this other thing. Can you pray for me? And that's what you want to, you want to be known for, for the one that Jesus yes, called do. there for a ministry. And, uh, and let's face it, you know, the gym is a place with a lot of people thinking their bodies are God and their ability is God. So, 
Lost identities for sure. Lost, yeah. So now, okay. So you did that, and then so have you ever worked like a job, jo- like a like an office job or anything like Actually, that? Actually, yes. Me and my husband had a real estate business. We had oh, a real okay. estate business, and he says that I didn't work, but I was the office manager. <laughs> He yeah. just made it, you made it easy, so he didn't think you worked. <laughs> exactly. He says you show up late, you go to lunch, and then you go home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I was in real estate for a while. Okay. With him. Okay. So now, um, I keep I'm I'm kind of jumping all over the place, but I have so many questions for you. How did you find healing journeys today? You know, let me think. Oh, through Andrew Womack. Okay. So Andrew Womack, yeah, I actually, I listened to one of the healing journeys and he stated that there was a channel. So then uh, that's exactly how I found it. And, and then, it was a blessing. Well, and that man, well, he's the reason why this even exists because he's the one that produced all of the documentaries, you know, the heal of all the journeys. The well, I don't, I don't think I would be, well, I know, actually I ponder on that and I tell the Lord, I don't know where I would be if I did not know spirit, soul, and body. Yes. If I had not ran into that meeting, I mean that meeting, yeah, well meeting because I, I met the Lord there. But if I wouldn't have ran into that truth, I don't know where I would be because if I, I can, know. if I have to walk this world in my flesh, then again, it's a dead end. But recognizing who I am in the spirit and recognizing that I could walk out the rest of my life in my spirit, it just, it's, it's, it's a game changer. Yep. It is a game changer. So spirit, soul, and body change my life. That spirit, soul, and body. Yes. uh, The authority of the believer. And then you've already got it. Yes. Those are the things that were just built a foundation. And so you said now you're five years into having a different relationship with the Lord. So what does that look like from what it was, um, you know, as the, you know, the legalistic Susie to now the Susie that Jesus loves? Surrender. And what I can say is like, when I recognized that, like, for example, I, I just, I want to bring this up. So when I was sexually assaulted, um, my identity was obviously in myself. So I couldn't get past that assault. I was now a victim and um, I saw myself as a victim. I felt like the world saw me as a victim. My life had changed. I was living in the natural. So back then I lived exalting everything that was happening around me versus everything that was actually the truth. So the difference between the Susie that died and the Susie that lives is that I chose to die. I chose to say what I feel, what I, what I, the emotions that I'm going through. Yes, I feel them, but that's not who I am. My identity is in Christ. I am as he is. And regardless of whatever I was facing, I always saw God gave me this ability to see choices like I always see choices like mm. everywhere I go, there's a choice. And I'm just like, oh, my Lord, thank you. But one of the things that I can say is that even when I was starting to renew my mind in the truth of who God was and his will for me, God gave me, um, I feel like instructions in Matthew 5, I think it's 44 or 45. He told me that I needed to bless my enemies. And I was like, oh, he's got to be crazy because I'm not blessing whatever his name was, I'm not going to bless him. I will bless everybody but him. And every time I would renew my mind and and listen to God's word, I would hear this voice within me telling me that I needed to bless him to be blessed, to be, you know, so surrender him so that I could be set free. So I recall being obedient. And I remember I went into my shower and I said, Lord, I'm going to bless him verbally but in my heart I can't right I can't in my heart you know what he did and I cannot bless him and the Lord said we're gonna start with your mouth we're gonna start with your mouth and the change is gonna come effortless I'm gonna turn your hard heart into a heart of flesh you don't have to do it I'm God So I remember going into the shower and I just started to bless him. I said, Lord, 
I bless him. I bless him with knowing who you are. And then he gave me this vision of him chasing him, that he loved him. And I was like, why are you showing me this? I don't love him. And I'm like, I don't love him, Lord. And he told me, I love him. I love you and I love him. Right. Surrender him and your feelings to me. So I started to bless him. I said, I bless his business. I bless him with him knowing you, Lord. I pray for his salvation. And I just started to bless his family, his wife, his children. And I left that shower and I felt that the bricks had just fallen off. And it went down the drain. Yes. And I couldn't believe it. And I walked out of that shower. And two days later, I thought, you know, I don't hate him anymore. I, that hate that I had in my yes. heart, it, it, it went away. Like, literally, it was tangible for me. I could feel it in my heart. And I started to walk in that. I started to say, I thank you, Lord, that you love him and that you love me. I thank you that you love me so much and that you still have love for him. And that when I wasn't a good mother to my son, you love me. And that the way you restored me, you're going to restore him. And I come to find out, you know, I don't know, weeks, months later, whatever, I run into someone and they tell me, oh, so-and-so is a born again Christian. And I was like, oh, my Lord. And that's how much God loves me. God loves me so much. He wanted me to know that he loved him so much that he died for him as well. And now we're part of the same family. Now, the man that hurt me gave his life to the Lord. And I'm able to accept my journey and his journey because at the end of the day, we both met at the cross and he's forgiven and I'm forgiven and I have no sting. And, and because I surrendered it to the Lord. See, the thing is, it's a choice that we have to make. Mm -hmm. it, there isn't a formula. It isn't that I took communion five times a day because God knows that I did. It's that I needed to, I needed to recognize who God was in my life and how real he was in my life. That even though I was crying, even though I couldn't drive, even though I had anxiety, even though I had depression, that wasn't who I was. Right. That, those were all just things that were happening to me, but that's not who I was. I was more than a conqueror. And I remember that I pretended I had a piece of paper and I started waving it around and I'm like, Jehovah Nisi, you have the victory. I don't know how you're going to do it, but you're going to do it. I don't know how. And then all of a sudden, I, I started to feel whole because I was whole back when I was declaring it. But it came to a place where I believed it before it happened. Even if I was in the trenches, I started to believe God. I'm like, I believe your word. I believe that this depression is not something that's going to stay it might have come, but the way it came, it's going to go. And I didn't rebuke it every day. I just started resting that I'm loved by God. God loved me, but God also loved him. He did not just die for Susie, because Susie wanted to believe that he just died for Susie. <laughs> but he did not just die for Susie. He died for Daryl, too. He died for him. He loves him. Yeah. And because he loved him, he saved him. He saved him from himself the way he saved me from myself. He set me free from me. He saved him and set him free from him. Right. And, you know, the monster that I saw him as, God saw him as that little two-year-old that I see when I see my son and, and that I visualize that the Lord sees me because he sees me in Christ. He sees me as as Christ on the cross. And I just think that that just changed my perception of people, my perception of myself, my perception of relationships, and really finding my identity in Christ, finding that I'm not who I see in the mirror. So I have a question then. What was like, did somebody say, all right, Susie, get up out of this, you know, this house, get up out of this bed. Um, you're going to start watching this, or I'm going to teach you that, like, what started, like, did you, because I know when I was feeling really depressed and sad and just everything in despair, 
I did not, 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 I didn't necessarily want to get in the word at times. <laughs> I would listen to things because I knew I should, but I wasn't listening excited. So who was that in your life that said, here, start listening to this? Like who brought you to Andrew? Oh, you know, it's funny because when I first heard Andrew, I'm like, oh, this is not for me. Yeah, <laughs> and me it was too. actually, and it was my husband because my, my husband, he told he, I don't know um, how I went about it. My husband says, you know what, Susie, I think you would like this, the Christian survival kit. He yes, sent it to me. I, yeah. And I listened to that and I was just like, oh Lord, I cannot listen to that again. <laughs> I was like, I'll be honest with you. So I was listening to Joseph Prince. Okay. And I was just like falling in love with the Lord. And then my husband was listening to Andrew Womack. So I started to listen to Andrew because my husband would listen to Andrew. So when I got a hold of um, spirit, soul, and body, that's when I was like, oh my God, where has this been all of my adult life? Like I needed, I needed this in 2015. Right. But it was, it was really the teachings of Andrew Womack that helped transform um, effortlessly my relationship with God. Because as I renewed my mind, I felt like it transformed it to truth. Meaning like, I think I always had a relationship with God, but I had it through other people. Yes. So I had all this, I had all this knowledge of what other people said he, he was. Yes. And then when I recognized, wait a minute, I have the mind of Christ and I have the spirit that dwells inside of me. Everything that I have, I just need to hear and he will give me revelation over it. So that really helped me. But one of the things that I can say was declaring the word over me. But I agree with you. When I was in my, my um, I call it the pit. When I was in the pit, yes. I, I didn't want to necessarily read the word because I found the word to be very confusing. Because every time I would start reading the word, I would start in the Old Testament. And I was like, oh, my Lord, I can't pronounce half of this. I was like, help me, Jesus. <laughs> but what happened is that I, I, I took a couple of scriptures and I would just declare them over myself. And one of the ones that I really um, enjoyed declaring over myself was Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Mm -hmm. When I recognized that these are the fruit of the spirit that was deposited inside of me. So I'm already these things. I used to read this verse and say, oh, this, these are goals. <laughs> right. Yes. I'm one day going to have these. <laughs> oh, Susie, I'm so glad you said that because we do that. We think that that's something that we're going to attain at some time. It's like, it's in our future. Um, but you know, God, I've got to go through this first before, <laughs> before I, I let you tell me really who I am. That is so good. Wow. I know, you know, there's another teaching that Andrew has, it's called effortless change. And that was another one. I was like, what do you mean effortless change? Like, I've got to make myself change, <laughs> right? But it is the word and, and the word is powerful. And so I think we start, you know, there's like what we call confession police, you know, where we're like, you've got to confess, you know, great things over yourself. And they say it to you in a way where you're like angry and, and you being, you and I being, you know, teachers of physical fitness, like we were. <laughs> We could very easily condemn people with, you know, telling them what they have to say and how they have to say it. But there is a fine line because what are you speaking? If you're mm -hmm. not going to speak the word, what you're speaking something. So whatever you're saying, your body's reacting to. So wouldn't it be so much better to speak the word? Not Amen. to be like mm -hmm. trying to hammer yourself every day, but speak the word out of love so that your body can consume it and, um, and become that. And so that is, I'm so glad that you said that because there's so much about, you know, I've, I've confessed all night long. So what do you mean? Do you stop confessing? Do you stop talking about the Lord? Do you stop his word out of your mouth? No. Um, and like you said too, it's like the emotional stuff was one thing, but the spiritual stuff was something else going on. So we don't always see it. So now I want to ask you about you were, okay. So when you said you were sexually assaulted, you, what, like what, not what happened? Cause I don't think we need to go into the details of that, but when it was over, what happened? Like, what did you do to your, like, how did you think? What were you, what, 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 would, what did you do? Like, how did you feel? Well, 
it, it was a um he was a massage therapist okay so I went because I worked out I was sore and typically you know you go and you pre- do preventative work so I went on a constant basis to um to this gentleman and um there was trust that was being built okay. but when the assault happened the first thing that I did was I went into my car and um, I thought of killing myself. I had this thought immediately, I, immediately, immediately. I walked up. First of all, I walked out crying. And when I got to my car, I said, I, I don't want to kill myself. But why am I having these thoughts? I'm hearing these voices. And it was the voice of obviously the enemy. But he was telling me, like, look at what you did to your husband. Oh, my God. Look at what look at look at what is your son? How is your son going to deal with this? Because my son was a, a he was a in junior high. He was in junior high. So he was old enough to know. And he knew him. We all three of us would go there. So because of that, I had a face to the enemy. You know, I had a person to hate. And because of that, I was sitting in my car and I was contemplating suicide. Oh my God. Not recognizing like, oh, I'm going to go home and I'm going to take these pills. But I was like, I am better off dead. So I kept pondering on that thought. That thought came in and I would ponder on it. So even though I had called my friend and she told me that it wasn't my fault, I came home and I would think my shorts were too short. My top was too tight. I smiled too much. Why did I comb my hair? Did I comb my hair so that he could think that I was pretty? You know, all these thoughts that were like, I I was blaming myself. You know, I was blaming myself. And a lot of the things that I recognize now is like, (laughs) all the judgment that I passed on other people was coming back at me. Mm. So when people would tell me, oh, this person was assaulted, I'd be like, oh, my God, but remember what she was wearing or remember how she acted oh. when she was drunk? Oh. I was one of those. That so, is so good. You know what? I love the scripture says, judge not lest you be judged. And it's not the judgment that, that God is putting upon you. It's your own self-judgment. Exactly. Oh, that is so good. Exactly. So all of the judging that I did was coming back at me. I was remembering everything that I would say about other women. And I would think like, oh, my Lord, th- it happened. Or she to deserved me. it. Yes. Yeah. She des- and, and, you know, the thing is that I, I recall that when one of the first people that I told was a family member and she told me, she was like, why didn't you call the police? Why didn't you call the police? If, if, if that happened, why didn't you call the police? And I said, you know what? I didn't think of calling the police. I was too broken, to be honest with you. I just wanted to get home. Yeah. And like, well, well, then why didn't you tell your husband? Because I didn't want to hurt him. I'm like, who? Do, why does the world get to decide what we do? I don't yeah. know. But there's this protocol that they think that we need to follow. And I recognized at that moment that I didn't want to tell anybody. And I think I didn't want to tell anybody because I didn't want to face people. I was so scared of the sergeant slaughters of the world, which was me. I was so scared. Wow. Of it. So now I, when did you act? When did you tell your husband? I told my husband about, I would have to say almost like six months later. Okay. And I told him because we weren't getting along anymore. Well, did he notice that you were getting depressed? And he noted like, why were you depressed in, in his mind? Well, this is what he said. You need to go do something. Obviously, you working two to three hours a day isn't enough. You need to get a job. You need to find purpose in your life. You need to do something. RJ's already grown up. He's in junior high. You know, you're home all day. You need to do something. And he would tell me, he's like, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you all the time? And I'm like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I'm like, just leave me alone. Who cares if I want to be in my pajamas? So like now? one day you completely changed and he just... Like, how did he notice? Like, I mean, because obviously if you were really outgoing and active before and now you're in your pajamas, depressed and sad. So did how how was his reaction to you? Like, was he going like, hey, Susie, what's going on? I honestly can tell you that I think he was thinking he would he might divorce. me. Like he thought like whoever this new you is, I don't like and I cannot Mm. see myself with her anymore. So I kind of feel like while I was going through all of that. He was putting up with me because I was becoming this ogre. 
you know, I was yeah. becoming this person I don't even recognize. Right. But my husband didn't know what was happening. And in one of our fights or whatever you want to call them, I told him, I said, look, Rob, I think I need to tell you. I said, okay. I was sexually assaulted and he started crying mm. and he, he broke down and he was saying that he failed me, that he was so sorry that he didn't you know, protect me. And I'm like, wait a minute, Ralph, I do know this. This has nothing to do with you. You cannot complete me. You are not the source of my happiness. You are not the source of my joy. I found Jesus. And he looked at me like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> and I told him, I said, Ralph, I used to look to you to make me happy. And that's why I was always incomplete. Being a mother doesn't make me complete. You guys are not my source. It is Jesus and Jesus alone. And he told me that day, I had just told him everything that happened. And he's like, Susie, he was like, I'm sorry. I love you. He says, but please just whatever you do, just don't become radical like your mom. That's what he told me. And I looked at him and I said, what? And he was like, you know, I'm glad that you found Jesus. Just don't be radical. Just, just be normal. And I, I looked at him and I'm like, why? He was like, because for the last couple of weeks, I've been watching you. You're doing a lot of things that I see your mom do. And I just thought, oh, my Lord. And I just started laughing. And I said, little do you know, Ralph, that if I wanted to radically be saved by the Lord, I, there, it takes radical measures. I said, and me going around declaring verses over myself and declaring them over you and declaring, our, you know, verses over RJ. That's what saved me, Ralph. I said, speaking the word and recognizing that I was exalting the truth over the facts is what saved me because I, I was able to rest. I was able to say, you know, it doesn't matter if, you know, um, what I'm going through, what the world says. It doesn't matter what I see. It doesn't even matter what I feel. I am what the word says. That's final. And I used to say, you know, to my husband, I'm like, God said it and I believe it. That's it. It's final, Ralph. It's done. And to him, it was like, oh, my God, she's so radical. But he says, you know, and now, obviously, he's in agreement with me. And, and sometimes he thinks I'm too much, but it's okay. <laughs> he used to think I was too much when I was a trainer. So, <laughs> like you said, it, it was I did it for the world. Now I'm doing it for the Lord. It's the same personality. I'm all in. I said, I have to be all in, Ralph. I'm all in or nothing. And I said, and without God? Look at me. I'm broken. I'm depressed. I'm sad. It's gloomy outside. I go in with the Lord, Ralph. I said, people can throw things at me. They can stone me. I said, and I will get right back up and know that I'm not defeated. And he's seen that. He sees me walk that out. And what I mean by that is there's been times just recently, there was um, a little issue that we had with one of our neighbors that came over and said that they didn't want um, the construction that we're doing that, you know, whatever. And um, I told my husband, oh, we could rejoice. I said, we could rejoice. I said, because guess what? God's going to turn this around. I said, and we could be troubled on all sides, but we are not defeated. It does not matter. And he looked at me and he's like, really? <laughs> I said, yeah. I said, it doesn't matter to me. I said, let's throw a party. I said, if we believe God, we can throw a party. So we're going to tell every single person that we know that we love our neighbors and that our neighbors are going to be blessed with our construction. And we're going to walk in that truth. I said, and we're going to talk to our neighbors and we're going to tell them that, that they're a blessing and that we have a peace offering for them. And that we're going to go over there and we're going to take them something to bless them. And my whole thing was like, in and of myself, I had every reason to be upset. Yeah. You know, I had every reason to feel picked on, but I said, no, I'm going to stand on God's word. I'm going to stand on his word and I'm going to bless my neighbors. They are not going to be my enemies. I am not going to live in strife. There's going to be peace. And because there's peace in this home, there's going to be peace in that home. That's and right. Know what who you are on your block. You are not your identity is not victim. 
Your identity in Christ is not be a victim, be mad at everybody. Everybody's doing you wrong. We know that people are going to wrong you because they wronged Jesus. He said, if they hated me, they're going to really hate you. So we already know that going in. And but but we have the love that is so strong on the inside of our hearts literally combats the other and yeah. doesn't let us take us down. So, OK, so then the the assault happened, you said, like five years ago um, when you got hold of the truth. Like, how long did you sit in the depression before you actually started coming out of it? Who well, it's funny is that about nine months. And you know why I think about nine months? Because I read the book of Job with the wrong perspective. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because I sat there and thought exactly like Job. <laughs> like, I'm like, mm. literally, I was like, did God write this book for me or what? Right, and right. I would sit there and I would be like, so interested to find out why he went through all of that. Not recognizing that, oh my God, like, I was, re I had the wrong lenses. Like, right. I had the wrong lenses when I saw Job. I didn't see Jesus. I saw Job. <laughs> yeah. But the, the, the point of that is that I kind of felt like it drug on for such a long time because I wasn't walking in my, I wasn't walking in my authority. And I also wasn't walking in my spirit. I still was walking in my flesh. So whenever I had that feeling of, okay, I'm sad today. I would say, okay, I'm going to read the word, but today I'm sad. <laughs> right. Not recognizing I had a choice. And Not I recognizing be sad because it was a I, choice. Right. And I can be sad because I want to. And, and because I am a victim. Yeah. I am. Like I would say, I, well, I, I am a victim and I'm not a victim. No. Nope. I, I finally got to choose and say, I am not a victim regardless of how I feel. Yep. Regardless of if even the world says I'm a victim, I'm not a victim. I'm no, not you're a victim. Not. And I have a choice. And that's when the, I told the Lord, I said, Lord, please reveal my choices to me every day, every single day of the rest of my life. I know that I have a choice and you reveal them to me. Show me doors and open doors and many doors so that yeah. I know that I get to choose. And just like the matrix, the, the man with the keys with a lot of doors, that's how I see myself. I hold the keys because I hold my identity in Christ. And those are the doors that I get to choose where I go through. And if I open one and I don't like it, I get to close it and lock it, walk away to another one. Yeah. It's like and a game show. It's like Susie, exactly. we got door number one or door number two. <laughs> exactly. Number and one guess what? is the Lord. Number two is all the world has to offer. Which one do you choose? Amen. And, and you know, you could open door number two and close it. Say, no, that's thank you. right. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't want to open that door. No, I'm shutting that door now. Well, okay. So then you're about nine months you sat in that. So it took you how long to, well, it's taken you four years to get to where you are today. When do you feel like you really did come out of that depression and you started driving again? Because let me just mention to everybody, you live like what, two hours from me or an hour and a half? Yeah, right? two. About two hours. She drives to the Bible study two hours. So this was someone that didn't want to even come out of her house, right? That didn't want to drive. Now mm -hmm. drives two hours to come to our Bible study or our Bible. What do you call it? Our Bible school. <laughs> our Bible school. Yes. It's, so, I, call okay, it, so, I tell my mom that we're, we're hungry for steak and potatoes. That's right. And prime, <laughs> prime steak, right? The, the nicest, the Mastro's kind of steak. That's the Exactly. <laughs> so now, okay. So then it, do you feel that now at five years later, that now you're able to talk about it and you're able to now go out to the world because you're doing that right now on the journey. But right now you don't realize you're just talking to me, but you have no idea the millions yeah. of people that are going to see this. So how did you get to that place where now you are free to go and talk about this? Renewing your, renewing my mind, renewing my mind daily. Ren um, I think mind renew is huge, but I, but I also think it's, daily surrender yes so like today i said you know what is it live is oh my god am i getting anxiety am i getting what am i going to say what should i not say should i write things down that i don't want to say or that i do want to say and then i said no no i'm going to surrender this lord these lips are yours these thoughts are yours my hands are yours 
I'm going to, you're, you're going to speak through my vocal cords. I said, you have a plan for me and it's good. And I was able to surrender those thoughts. So I just think like daily surrendering everything and knowing that I'm loved, I'm loved. He wouldn't have put me in this place to put me through something that I couldn't be um, blessed by. So this is a blessing to me. I'm going to be able to, to see this and know that look at where I've come. Yeah, I could go back to my diaries and remember where I was and yeah. now see this and say, thank you, Lord, because you had promised me this four years ago. Yes. You knew this already. You knew that I was going to be set free and that I wasn't going to have a sting, that I wasn't going to be hurt and that I was going to be able to declare how good you are and how you're faithful to your word and your promise. I, there's no. no expiration date on your promise. No. And his plans for you are good and oh, they are yes. not evil. And that's where a lot of people don't, they think that God puts you through horrible things so that you, then you're like, then you say, okay, so then where's, how does that scripture work that my plans for you are good and not evil. So we're running out of time again. And, uh, <laughs> but I want to thank you so much for this interview I want you to pray for the people that are listening right now that are in the same place, whether, you know, however the depression got there, however the sadness got there, however the victimization got there, it doesn't matter. There's one, there's one Jesus that covers all of them. So I'd like you to pray for them. I would love to. So Lord Jesus, I just thank you for this opportunity, Father God, that you are so good, Lord. That from everybody that is hearing, Lord, you have chosen them. That you see them as holy, righteous, and pure. And the promise over them, Father God, you will fulfill it. That we don't need to work. We don't need to strive. We just need to rest. And we just need to know that you are God and that you are working it all for our good, Father God. So, Lord Jesus, we just thank you for victory. Lord, we just wave our flag of victory and we just declare it done in Jesus' name. Because when you said it was done and it was finished, you bore it on the cross and we receive it, Father. We will not let you die in vain, Father. Everything that you've promised is ours. We receive our inheritance, Father, and we exalt you over any facts, Father God. We exalt the truth. We exalt the truth, and the facts are just merely facts. We just thank you that you present us with choices every single day, and that we choose to believe you. We choose to walk in your love. We choose to walk in your victory, Father God. And we just thank you, Father God, for the opportunity, Lord, to speak into all these women's lives and men. And Father God, and tell them that you are true, that you are that you are loving and that you are accepting and that you chose us, that you chose us long ago in our mother, mother's wombs, Father, that you chose us for your purpose, Father, that you are the true source of our happiness, that the voids that we are trying to fill with other things, they will not fulfill us, Father, only you fulfill. We just thank you, Lord Jesus, and in Jesus' name, you walk in the truth of what God has spoken over you. You walk in abundant life, which he calls us to, to have in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So you heard it. You have to make a choice to walk in his love. It's there for you. You make that choice. And I'm so glad that you made the choice to come to the journey today and listen to what Susie had to say. And thank you so much, Susie. What a blessing that you are to us, you know, in our Bible school and that's <laughs> and on the journey and healing journeys today. So everyone out there, please take this in. Take this in as someone that has experience maybe what you've been experiencing or maybe something that you know that that uh you know has been bothering you for so many years in your past that is literally limiting you and keeping you in a place that you know that there's a better place to be you know there's a higher level that you need to go to but you're literally being held down by whether it's victimization or it's it's religion or whatever it is Seek after the relationship with the Lord. There's nothing better. There is absolutely nothing that you could ever want on this earth more than, than what you could have with Jesus, just you and him together. When he, oh, when he comes into your heart and just blesses you and just puts you in a whole different place and makes you know, makes you not just feel, but that you know that you're loved. 
and that nothing can ever take that away from you. Not one thing. So thank you guys so much. Remember to go to check out our website. It is up and we've got all kinds of opportunities there for you to receive the newsletter, for you to register for the uh, in-person conference, which I cannot wait, which is June 17th and 18th in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's going to be awesome. We cannot wait. It's our first one for, for 2022. And then also check out all of our teachers because they are amazing. And we have some new teachers that have joined us and it's awesome. And it's all for you. So thank you guys so much. And we'll see you next time on the journey. Bye-bye. God bless.